She's pushing it right now. You're good to go. All right. Happy Sunday, y'all. We have one more week left and for Team Cup. And in the lead for Team VIP teams is Team um, Jump for Joy with Jack, led by Jackie, Lindsay, Sarah, Amber, and Kristen with 45 points. In second place is Dynamic Glow Getters. Uh, which is Jessica Warren, Abby, Brittany, Casey, Danielle, and in third, Living Life on Purpose, Angela, Kate, Erica, Lindsay, Jenny, and fourth, um, Joy Dynasty, myself, Arivai, Rachel, Tessa, and Alex, and in fifth place is Team Brave and Strong, Jennifer Flores, Vanessa, Jennifer, Kayla, and Allison. Lots of points on the board for all of our Team VIP Team Cup teams. And big congrats to um, Team Jump for Joy. You will be leading our team call next week, which will be a power hour from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. Central Time. And you guys will get to lead us through that and, you know, kind of just take us through and share what's worked with y'all this month and help us end the month strong. All right, that's it for recognition tonight. All right, so I'm excited to talk to us today about personal development. Um, oh, let me go ahead and pull up my screen. So what we've been doing is over the last, I don't know, what is this, week four, we've really been chatting about the basics of this business. And so that's kind of what I'm gonna talk about of like what it is we do as a coach. We had Rachel come on and talk to us about our why and our vision and what it is that we're doing and why are we doing it? Why are you here Sunday night at 8.30 making it happen? Then we had Genevieve come on and talk about the inviting process, how to share authentically your journey on social media, how to invite people in and what you should be doing. And then last week we had Jessica talk about how to fit this in. We all lead busy lives, but if you really want to have success in this business, you have to be a good manager of your time. And she really broke that down. So if you haven't seen every single one of these series, I would encourage you, it's in the events page of Team VIP to go back and watch. Um, but now I'm going to talk about personal development. And if you've been around me for even a short while, you know I'm obsessed with this piece. And this is what I feel like will make or break your business. So I'm excited to share with you. I have so much to say. I'm doing my best to keep it simple today because I could literally talk and talk and talk, but I'm going to keep it simple. Um, but before we begin, I just want you to put your hand on your heart and I want you to repeat after me. We're all on mute, hopefully, but repeat after me. I am open to new ideas. I am willing to do my part and I am committed to my success. Okay, so I want you to feel that, to speak that out loud, know that, feel that, like, look, I'm here, I'm open, I'm willing to learn, I'm willing to do my part, maybe what I've been doing hasn't been working, so I'm open to new ideas, changing it up, and ultimately, I'm committed to my success. I don't believe any of us are here on accident, I believe you were brought to this team for a reason and for a purpose, and it's up to you to commit to, I will do this until I'm successful. So, before we get started... I just wanted to quickly talk on the power of personal development because this is what the life, a day in the life of an entrepreneur looks like, especially in the beginning. But even now, I still have days, weeks, months where this is what it feels like. When you first sign up to be a coach, you're excited. Maybe you're a little bit nervous, but you're excited. And then maybe you have your first dip where you ask me to join you and they're like, no, you know, that's great for you, but I'm not really interested. And then you're like, oh, this is so hard. And then something great happens. You have somebody that's like, yeah, awesome. Give me more. I'm excited. Let me know. I'd love to see what you're doing and what this is all about. And you're like, yes, it's working. I'm sharing my journey. I'm inviting people to join me. People are interested. They want more information. Uh, then maybe you send the wrong link or something happens. You feel like, oh, I messed up. And then you're like, no, I'm so committed. I'm going to give up the good. I'm going to, I'm going to go for the great. I'm happy with where I'm in my life, but I'm excited to take this to the next level. And then you get a big dip and you know what? You're like, you know what? Maybe this just isn't for me. If this were meant to be, it would probably be easier. Like I would be in flow and like, maybe it's just, maybe success isn't for me. 
And then something good happens. You have somebody who's like, hey, I've been watching you. Um, I'd love to join your team. I'm really interested. And you're like, yes, this is awesome. I'm good. Or you get like a message from your uh, customer who's lost 12 pounds. She feels amazing. You're like, okay, I am good. I am good at this. I meant to do this. Why am I so hard on myself? And then you get a coach cancellation, right? Those are the worst. And you're like, you know what? I was wrong. I suck. This is hard. And then again, you're on the up and down of, wait, my sec- wait a second. My life is great. The ebbs and flows of this business are hard, especially in the beginning. But this is where personal development comes in because instead of riding that coaster of the up and down and the highs and lows, and this is great and this sucks, I'm terrible, I should keep going, I know I can do this, I know I can be successful, or like, uh, maybe it's not for me. Personal development kind of keeps you on the upward momentum path. Not to say that you don't have hard days or you don't have missed goals because you definitely will, but it keeps you in the right mindset of just knowing, hey, it's all part of the process. I don't suck. My business doesn't suck. I'm committed to my success. I know I can do this. So I wanted to show you this graphic because I want you to know that if you have felt those things, it is normal. Um, and it will continue to happen. But when you're feeling those things, you got to pull yourself back in check. And that's really what I'm going to focus on today. So success formula in this business. We talked about it a lot. A lot. What we think the formula for success is a strong why. We had Rachel talk to us about that. It's great. You have to have a strong why for why you're doing this business. If it's just because I really love helping people, that is amazing. That's our mission. That is our job description. But that is not why you are here on Sunday night listening to this call. That's not why you're going to get your butt up at 445 in the morning or stay up till 11 after your kids are asleep to grow this business. That's not why. So if you don't know what you're doing, you should know. And I should be able to come and ask each of you. In fact, it'd be nice right now if you could put in the chat, what is your why? My why is financial freedom, generational wealth. I want to retire my husband. I want to retire my mom. And I never want to have to say no because of finances. That is my why. Okay. So when I don't want to work my business, I remember, oh, wait, you said you wanted financial freedom. You said you wanted generational wealth for your family. You want to retire your husband and your mom. Do you want to work your business? And that's enough for me to be like, hell yes, I do. Okay. So have that why in the head, in your head, that if you're upline, we're to get on a call with you and ask you, okay, now remind me, what's your why? You would know it. Okay. The strategy. This business is simple. I always joke that my daughter is nine years old and I'm pretty sure I could teach her the daily behaviors of how to run her business. I could teach her how to take a good picture. I could teach her how to um, write a caption. I could teach her how to reach out and invite and share value. I could teach her how to run a challenge group. Quite honestly, she could probably schedule my posts, right? The strategy is not hard. Um, and we have laid it out for you. If you're not following your business activity tracker, if you're not jumping on our weekly power hours that we have daily, jump on because we go over a specific strategy and we take you through action, right? Because at the end of the day, you got to have action. You can know what to do, but if you're not putting it into place, it won't matter. And then the fourth, we talk about it all the time is consistency. You have to show up daily in this business. You can't show up on an action hour, power hour, three times a week and expect to really grow a business. You just can't. Just like you wouldn't expect to go to a career three times a week and then at the end of the month, expect to get a full paycheck. That's not how this works, okay? So we think, okay, I got it. I got my strong why. Have a strategy and a simple plan. I'm going to take action and I am committed to be consistent. I'm doing all these things. I'm literally doing all these things, Raquel, and it's not working. It still feels hard. Like, I, what am I doing wrong? Why isn't it working? Maybe this business isn't for me. I'm telling you that because I know that I felt it, right? The strong why strategy action consistency will get you success in this business. It'll take you somewhere and it'll get you to a point and then you're going to feel stuck. Okay. This is where most people are like, you know what? I don't think it's for me. Maybe network marketing, maybe beach body coaching isn't for me. Most people in this business, I'm just going to give it to you straight. They give up long before they could have succeeded. But if you're on this call and you're listening, my encouragement to you is don't be most people. Don't be most people. So let me just go ahead and tell you what the real success formula in this business is. It is. It's having that strong why. It's having the strategy of what do I do? How do I grow this business? How do I invite? How do I share? You got that. We've given that to you a million times over. You can go to YouTube. You can go to Google. This business is simple. It's taking action doing your daily business activity tracker, jumping on the power hours, and being consistent day in and day out, showing up even when it would be easier not to. 
But the missing piece that I see nine times out of 10 when people come and tell me they're stuck is the mindset piece, right? What do you believe? Do you in your head believe without a shadow of a doubt that your success is inevitable? Do you? Or have you decided to give this business a try until it gets a little bit hard, you get a little bit uncomfortable, maybe you don't wanna hear people say no, and you know what, you're like, ah, it's not for me. Your mindset's not in the right place. And if your mindset's not there, I'm telling you right now, you won't reach the level of success that you're looking for because that will make or break you. So let's go a little bit further into what is that? So this business, why I love network marketing, I could go on and on about why I love network marketing. If you wanna talk compensation plan and money, this is the business route to go, but that's not what we're talking about here. Network marketing is a journey of personal development with a compensation plan. Eric Worre is one of the huge guys in network marketing. If you don't listen to his podcast or have read Go For No, strongly encourage it. He's a brilliant network marketing mind. And it is. You know, traditional businesses and careers, they don't push you to become better and to evolve and to grow financially, mentally, and spiritually. You know, I worked in higher education. I worked with college students in an educational setting where you would think they would push me to grow. And yes, I had continuing education and I had professional development um, where I was learning how to be a better employee, right? How to be a better educator for my students, how to be a better employee. And I think one time we actually did have seven high habits of highly effective people. I think in my 10 years there, that was part of my continuing education credit. That's great. But I wasn't encouraged day in and day out to grow myself, to grow my mind, to grow my finances, to grow spiritually. That wasn't rewarded. It wasn't encouraged. It was kind of like, oh, you got to get this many hours of continuing education. Get it done. Did you get it done for your review? Okay. And away we go. This business is what's so unique is that we succeed only when we grow as people and when we help others grow and become better too. How beautiful is that? You know, we always say that our income is a direct reflection of the impact we're making. And I fully believe that as we grow and, and people and are able to help ourselves and be a light and shine for others and help others do the same, our income and our impact grow. That's what makes this difference. But the, the problem is it's so easy to skip, right? I know I can drink my Shakeology and my Energize and my collagen and all the things and I can work out, but it's so easy to skip the personal development piece because like, oh, I'm good. Like I, I'm really good. And quite honestly, I didn't even understand what personal development was before becoming a coach. I thought it was something for people that maybe like, I don't know, struggled with like mental health issues or low self-esteem and I didn't think I needed it. And now I'm like, where has this world been my whole life? Because it has changed me from the inside out as a person, as a mom, as a wife, as a business owner. And as I've grown as a person, so has my business. So if you're feeling stuck or you get to a place, if you're not feeling stuck, I'm telling you right now, you're going to get a point in your business where you're like, okay, what I did before wasn't working. I'm doing, I have a strong why. I'm doing the strategy. I'm taking action. I'm being consistent. I'm, it's not working. Usually it's because I've stopped growing as a person, as a leader, and my mindset isn't where it should be. But when I recommit to my personal growth, my business and my life get better always. So I'm just going to remind you, when you come to your upline coach, I guarantee your Star Diamond upline coach, and you're like, I don't know, it's just not working. I don't know what to do. You know, I'm not going to my Instagram. No one's saying yes. The first thing I will ask you is, well, what are you doing for your personal development? And that's so easy to brush off and be like, I'm doing it. Like, I am reading a book. I'm reading Fear is My Homeboy, so I'm doing it. But let's just talk a little bit about that, okay? Because there's doing it. And then there's like going through the motions and actually doing it. So let's talk about that in a minute. Um, but really what personal development is, is reprogramming your mind. So just like we do fitness and we're reprogramming our body and what we do and how we lift and we, you know, work our muscles so that they can grow and stretch and evolve and get better. That's what personal development is doing for us. It's reprogramming our mind because everything we are today is who we were trained to be from outside influences. How did our parents raise us? Did you go to church? What was the message there? What are you listening to on the radio? What are you watching on TV? Who are your coworkers? What in your circle of influence is the message that's being programmed to you? Like everything we are today is just what we've consumed and what we've been told and what we've been taught. But if we want to take ourselves to the next level, remember self growth equals business growth. We have to reprogram our thoughts and our words. Okay. 
Now, I want you to sit with me for a minute because you, if, you, if you have spent any time with me, you know I'm very much into my faith. I'm very much into spirituality and I'm very much into universal law of attraction, frequency, energy, science, all of it. I believe you can believe in God, you can believe in the universe, you can believe in science because guess what? We're all saying the same thing. We're just saying it differently. God gave us a powerful mind and most of us aren't using it to our advantage. I feel like that's one of our greatest resources, our thoughts and our words, our mind, and most of us are using it against ourselves and we don't even know it. So for those that love church, let me take you to church. As a man thinks, so is he. That's from Proverbs 23, seven. As we think, that's what we become, okay? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. We will eat the fruit of our words, right? So the things we say and speak about ourselves, they become our truth, okay? Neurologists, we want to take it to the science people. Maybe God isn't your thing. Okay, neurologists have proven the speech center of the brain controls our entire reality. Again, words have so much power. And then for all those other people who are on the spiritual path, universe, God, energy, law of attraction, universe, source, all the things, you know one of the biggest universal laws is like attracts like, thoughts become things. What you think, what you speak, what you say, they show up in your reality. How we think is how we speak. How we speak is how we act. And this is the power of programming. So I want you to catch yourself because it's so easy. And I think sometimes too, I think about my old career and who I used to surround myself with. It was kind of like team bonding to like vent and complain and to talk about how busy you were and how stressed you were and like, oh, it's Sunday night. Oh, I have such a hard week ahead of me. And it was just kind of like, yeah, just what you did. And when you speak those words, that's what you attract more of into your life. Or when you wake up in the morning, you're like, God, I'm so tired. Ugh. And then guess what? All day long, you're exhausted. Versus we would say, man, maybe I didn't get enough sleep tonight, but I have enough energy to get what I need to get done today. And if you would go into the day feeling that, you would feel like you have enough energy to make it through the day. There is so much power in our words and our thoughts, but there's so many thoughts up here that have just been given to us and we don't even know what we're thinking. So we have to work daily at reprogramming our mind because this is our greatest resource, okay? Hopefully you're with me. I can't see the chat, but I'll make sure to answer questions at the end, but hopefully that makes sense. So self check, okay? We, I've just talked about the, the purpose of personal development, how great it is, but a lot of us aren't doing it, but let's just talk about it. What are you currently reading or listening to for personal development? Put it in the chat. Okay. Again, I can't see it, but I will see it later. Hopefully you're saying something. And if you're like, mm, I'm not currently reading or listening anything. Okay. No worries. No judgment. This is just self-check, no judgment, good or bad. It's just, hmm, okay. Maybe that's step one for me. Maybe this week I'm going to commit to reading or listening to personal development. Maybe that's where I need to start. The next thing I want to ask you, you can put in the chat as well, how much time do you spend daily training your brain versus training your body? Because I know we are a health and fitness company and we are all about a healthy body, doing the workouts, drinking Shakeology, following our nutrition plan. And that's great. That's amazing. That's, you have to be a product of the products. You have to show people that what we do works. That's incredible. That's an outward thing that if you're following a plan and you're following nutrition, results are inevitable. It just is. With personal development, what we're feeding our mind, not always visible to the outward eye, right? I will tell you right now, I spend more time, probably 10 times as much, working on my mindset than I do my body. 100%. And I would venture to say, that most leaders in Beachbody, and I would say for sure on our team, spend more time working on their mind than they do their health, fitness, and nutrition, okay? That is the piece that will take you where you wanna go. So I would just encourage you, again, I constantly have it in the background in my life. When I'm getting ready in the morning, I'm listening to something. Um, you know, if I'm driving in the, in the car, I'm listening to something. My mom used to always joke that I would have like Tony Robbins or I'd be listening to national wake up calls in the background. My mom's like, your, your twins first words are going to be like beach body, or they're going to be like, you know, Tony Robbins knowing how to like get their energy up because that's what you constantly have of playing. And I did, I was obsessed 
and I still am. Like if you were to be in my house, my husband knows I always am listening to something because I think I just have so much value in constantly soaking it in. What books, trainings, personal development have been the most impactful for you, right? Because we can do, we can, I've read books before and I'm like, nah, I didn't really, like sometimes I've read books and I'm like, I feel like I should finish because I started, but like, eh doesn't really connect with me. I just want to give you permission right now. If you're reading a book and you're like five chapters in and it's not connecting with you, I give you permission to set it down and start something else. Okay. I, I used to struggle with like, I feel like I need to finish it. So I was going through the motions, but it really wasn't serving me. Okay. And here's the other one. What area do you need the most growth in? Because this is huge. Okay. Um, I love me some Rachel Hollis and girl, wash your face. That's great. That's awesome. People love her. She's great. If she connects with you, that's incredible. But I'll tell you, there's a group of women and not to throw shade at them at all in my church that we did like a little like girl, wash your face. Everyone read it. It was awesome. And they were so fired up. And yeah, we love it. We would talk about it. But then I would look and think, but are you, I mean, is it a feel good book? And we read it and then we close it and be like, all right, but are you implementing it? You know, like I never really saw women like, what are you doing with that information? Like, is that helping you? Does that make you feel good? There used to be those books called Chicken Soup for the Soul. Uh, That was like back in the 90s that my mom used to read. And then I would read and they felt so good. And they did. They were warm chicken soup for the soul. But you read it and then you put it away and then you went on with your day. And sometimes if we're not careful, that's what personal development can be. So I would encourage you, what area do you need growth in? Is it belief? Do you struggle in believing that your success is inevitable? Like, do you know, if I were to ask you right here, do you know that you will be successful in this business? Yes or no. And if it's not an emphatic hell yes, you need to start with belief. The Magic of Thinking Big, Anything by Les Brown, Tony Robbins, we can help you with that. But that's where you need to start. I don't struggle with belief. Like, that's not what I struggle with. You know what I struggled with for the longest time? Money mindset and scarcity. Like, For the longest time, I was like afraid to make money or if I did make money, what would happen? Would I lose it? So that's where I focused a ton of my personal development. Um, So much on money mindset. Even now to this day, I love, that's where I love to focus because I know for myself, that's where I need growth in. So I would encourage you, what area do you need most growth in? And make sure that you're reading something that's going to tackle that area and help you grow. And then the last part. Do you take action or implement what you learn? Because we can read it all day. We can listen on Audible. We can watch the YouTube videos and that's great. But if you're not taking action and implementing what you learn, stop reading and listening to books until you do that. Because that's where the magic happens. That's where when we start taking action, that's where you get to implement and see what works. And then that's also where you're like, oh, I do need some more growth in that area. Let me go read this book and learn and implement and learn and implement. You have to implement. Otherwise, just listening all day and having all this in your ear won't do anyone any good. You won't be making an impact. You won't be serving others. And that's really what our business is calling us to do. Okay. All right. So hopefully I've talked about the importance of it, but I want to give you some tangible things to think about because you're like, okay, that's great, Raquel, but I know I need to read personal development and I know I don't need to reprogram my mind, but how, right? Because I was always like, okay, but how? So let me just give you some daily practices that I do, okay? So if you were, you know, my personal coach and you came to me and you're like, I do, I lack belief. I have a scarcity mindset. Uh, I know I have a lot of negative thoughts that come up and I don't know how to change it. Cool. That's okay. Let, here's what I would encourage you to do. It's a daily practice, just like you do your daily fitness. Here's what I would encourage. First and foremost, awareness and understanding. So just an awareness, if you can just become aware of negative thoughts as they come up, that right there will put you in a place where you're more empowered to make a change. Because like I said, so much of the thoughts in our head have been given to us. We don't even know we're thinking negatively. We don't. It's just how we've always thought. It's how everyone around us thinks. I guess this is the way life is. We don't even know. So what I like to call this is a gentle observer approach. So you kind of like take a step back when a negative thought comes up and you're like, huh, that's interesting. You know, so if you come into like, what are some stumbling blocks that you're facing? Recognize when they happen 
and look at it. What are my triggers? Like what triggers me? I'll tell you one of my triggers. I can't follow other coaches in Beachbody. I can't do that. Um, because then I start comparing and I'm like, damn, they're crushing it. What is she doing that I'm not doing? And then I'll go look at her feet and I'm like, well, she doesn't look any different than me. What is, she's got to be doing something like what I don't understand. And then it's a, tr it's a downward spiral of like, damn, I'm not good enough. I should be further along by now. It's never going to happen for me. That is a trigger. So for me, I know when that happens, I'm like, oh, oh, let me take a step back. You know what? I just did that thing where I went down the rabbit hole of comparison and that never makes me feel good. All right, self, let's stop. You don't need to be looking what other people are doing. Focus on you. So that's something that's me, like an awareness and understanding what's a deeper issue. And then the last thing I do, and it's always coming back to your heart, right? When I'm stressed, when I'm worried, when I have negative thoughts where I'm like, ah, oh, I should be further along. Why isn't this working? Or dang, I had another coach cancellation. Oh, that sucks. I place my hand on my heart and I say, hey, something's important here. Otherwise, I wouldn't be feeling negative, right? If it didn't matter to me, I'd be, you know, apathetic. We'd move on. It wouldn't worry. So I put my hand on my heart and say, okay, what is this emotion really trying to tell me? What is it that I really want? So in that piece where I told you I went down the rabbit hole, and I'll tell you, that was on Friday night. You can ask Jessica where I went into the comparison mode. I put my hand on my heart and I was like, okay, what is this? What do I really want? And I became very clear of like, I do want all those big things. I'm afraid to say that I want it, but I do want to be a million dollar earner. I do want to be a 15 superstar coach. I do want to really be a leader of other leaders. Like that's important to me. That's why I'm feeling so negative because deep down, I really want that for myself. Okay. So an awareness of when negative thoughts are coming up, take a step back and be like, why am I feeling this? What's triggering me? And what does this really mean? Okay. That's step one. Okay, just address it. Step two, the power of pivoting. So turn your attention to what you do want and focus on the feeling of it. Choose a better feeling thought. This takes practice. So now when I'm having a negative thought, I recognize it. I look deep, like where is this coming from? Why is this triggering me? What do I really want? And then I choose a better feeling thought. This is sometimes easy and sometimes not. And I'll tell you in the beginning, sometimes not happy. It's not, it's not easy to pivot, but I remind myself, you know what? I can have those things too. I am a leader of leaders. I am a million dollar earner. I am a 15 superstar diamond coach. I'd start telling myself the I am statements. And you know what? If I don't get that, it's this or something better. I always say that too. When like somebody, I have people that are like, you know, it's between you and another coach. And I actually signed up with them. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? But then I tell myself, you know what? This or something better, right? For whatever reason, rejection is protection and God was protecting me. Maybe that wasn't going to be a good fit. Her or someone better. And then I go to my I am statements where I tell you, what do I really want? What do I want to believe? What do I, what's a better feeling thought? And I start to say it. Or another thing I say is I choose now to know and believe that my success is inevitable. I choose now to know and believe that I will achieve every goal in this business that I have for myself with ease and my timing, right? And maybe you're not there yet. Maybe saying I am a superstar diamond coach, I am a million dollar earner, maybe that doesn't feel right to you. And when you say it, it's like, that doesn't, that doesn't inspire me because it doesn't feel true, right? You're right. If you're saying an affirmation that you can't get behind, it's going to do more harm than good. So I just want you to tweak it a little bit. So that's when you go to, you just take it back a little bit and say, I'm willing to believe it's possible for me to have success in this building, this business. I am willing to consider the possibility that I too can become an elite coach, right? So it's the same thing as I'm willing to believe that this is possible. I'm willing to consider that that's an option, right? Versus I am, if you're not ready to be that bold then take it back a little bit and say, what are you willing to believe? What are you willing to consider? Okay. So the power of pivoting. You're going to notice those thoughts, see when they come up, choose to pivot a better feeling thought. And I promise you, it feels so crazy to be like, okay, but the minute you choose to pivot, it feels better. And that's what I want. I want for you to feel better because then you can start taking action from a place of better. And that's when the magic happens. All right. Going on with mindset being a daily practice, recondition your mind. So again, that pivoting, it's a, it's a new habit. It's a new thing. 
we're having to retrain our brain. It's going to feel awkward at first and that's okay. But that's the point of this. It's a practice. You get better every day that you do it. Um, a new way to respond to difficulty. I just told you coach cancellations used to like really stress me out. So if you've never had one and it's coming cause we all get them. I don't want it to stress you out. Now I, my new habit, when a coach cancellation comes across, I say a little prayer and I say, God, I hope that in our time together, they got what they need, what they needed. And I wish them nothing but love and success as they move forward. And that feels better to me than being like, damn, I got a coach cancellation. So I brought myself a new habit and a new way to respond to that difficulty that feels better. Okay. I don't know what that is for you, but again, just recondition little tweaks to make yourself feel better. Feed your mind with good ideas on a regular basis. Just talked about that. Personal development, be doing it daily. Feed your mind with good stuff. If, they're, if you're following people or you're listening or you're around toxic people, cut it out. Just as much as I hate to say that, cut it out of your life. I'll tell you right now, there were seasons of life where I really loved listening to Grant Cardone. If you've never read the 10 X rule or be obsessed or be average, those are great books. And there was a bit, there was a time in my business that it served me so well. They're kind of, and him and Gary Vee, they're a little bit more aggressive and in your face and do more and take more action. And you can do this. And there was a time in my business where that like pumped me up and I loved it. But right now this season, it stresses me out. When I listen to Grant Cardone to tell me to like 10 X what I'm doing or be obsessed or be average. I look at the season of life, what I'm with, with kids nonstop and being home. And I'm like, I can't 10 X my business. And it stresses me out. So I had to stop listening to that. Right. I had to stop listening to Gary V on YouTube. I had to stop listening to Grant Cardone's books that I have in my audible account because it wasn't helping me. Okay. Instead, I'm connecting with people. Um, Danny Johnson on YouTube, I just adore and love her. And she just, uh, she just makes me feel good, right? Gabby Bernstein, I love her calming presence. So I listen to them. I binge them. I have them in my ears, in the background of my life. That's what I'm feeding myself with. So again, see who connects with you and then feed yourself what they're saying. And then the last part to the reconditioning your mind is stay connected to those who embody positivity, joy, prosperity, and abundance. If you're on this team, congrats. I feel like you won the jackpot because I'm telling you, our team is full of this. If you are here on this call every Sunday, we're embodying that. We will pump you up with so much encouragement and joy and motivation. If you're in a coach pod, we're there for you too. So stay connected to the team. The worst thing you can do is like back away and try to do this on your own. Stay connected, stay plugged in, surround yourself with people who are embodying this on a daily basis. It matters. And then the last part I want you to do is build your belief muscle. We build our physical muscles every single day. Hopefully if you're doing MBF or whatever program you're doing, we're building our muscles, but we also got to build that belief muscle. So the create empowering mantras that you can say to yourself. Again, this is just building new habits and it's going to feel weird. But one of them, I just, I've said it multiple times. My success is inevitable. I deeply believe that in my core because I've said it so much. It was a mantra that I said so much that now it is a deep core belief. What is that? What is that mantra that feels good to you that you want to keep saying? Keep saying it. One of my other ones is uh, money is always flowing my way. That feels so good. And can I tell you, I get checks in the mail randomly all the time, or my husband does. Today, my husband got a random refund check of $250. And I'm like, babe, have you been saying your money mantras? Because I got him saying it too, because I'm always like, money is always flowing to me. Money flows to me in expected and unexpected ways all the time. Like it's a constant, it seems ridiculous, but then it's not because it becomes my reality. And my husband is a bit of a skeptic, but even he's like, I think you're onto something, these mantras of yours, because it's, it's getting like weird, right? Visualization. If you are on the power hours that Jessica and I lead, I'm going to make you visualize before we do anything. All it takes is 90 seconds. You could, right when your alarm goes up, goes off, spend 90 seconds visualizing your biggest, your wildest dream that you want to happen in your life. Or you could spend that same 90 seconds right before you go to bed. Those are the most perfect times. Right when you wake up from that point where you're between dreaming and awake. And right before you go to bed as you're relaxing and you're almost asleep, that's the perfect time to reprogram that subconscious mind and visualize your perfect day. I used to do this. I used to visualize 
when, when I was really working my business to be like, man, wouldn't it be cool if I could leave my full-time job? And so I would spend time visualizing what it would be like to wake up and I would visualize enjoying my cup of coffee outside on the back porch with Ryan and I would envision us walking the kids to and from school and then I would envision coming home and getting my workout done um, and what that would be like and then being able to pick up my kids at the end of the day and walk them home like I would get so real of like what it would be like to be able to work from home and then guess what it became my reality Okay, so spend 90 seconds a day visualizing what your most perfect life would look like. Obviously, the dream has changed, and now I have dreams of like, I visualize of what it will be like when my mom is my momager, because I've retired her, and what it will be like when Ryan is home with me all the time, behind the scenes working my business. And I have these like, I really visualize it. One of the best things I did is visualize a pool. If, you, if you're one of my close friends, you know, I've, I've sat out there with my cup of coffee and I would visualize what it would be like to have a pool. And guess what? Now we have a pool, right? So visualize. That's all I'm going to say. Take the time, 90 seconds. If you can do that once a day, it'll change your life. Affirmations. Program them into your phone. So if you have an iPhone, I'm sure if you have a, um, another phone, it works too. Under reminders, you can write one of your mantras. So here's one of mine. Money flows to me in both expected and unexpected ways. Cool. That's one of my reminders. I have it location-based. So you can actually put there what your mantra is. And it's actually location-based of Target back when I was going to Target. So every time I popped up to Target, I drove my van there to Target, this would flow up to me. Money flows to me in both expected and unexpected ways. I have another one that would go off whenever I would at my kid's school. So I was walking into the school. Um, I would have another mantra affirmation that would go off. You don't have to necessarily do it like this, but you can have alarms in your phone that at like noon, one of your affirmations goes off. So that at noon, it goes off um, and you read it out loud to yourself and then go on with your day. And that's just a great way. Again, you keep saying it over and over and over until it gets ingrained in you as a core belief. But those are some things I would, that I would encourage you to do. Um, and then I think I forgot my, my last sentence there, but with the visualization part two, how would you feel? I know sometimes we get stuck or like this business feels hard, right? We've all been there, I hope. If not, maybe you don't experience that, but I know I have. I try to take a step back and think, but how would it feel if it were easy? How would it feel if I was already a 15 superstar coach? Like, how would that feel? And I get to myself and I visualize the feeling where I'm past being stuck. Because if you allow yourself to stay in the stuckness, you can stay there and it doesn't feel good, right? And then you just stay stuck and you stay stuck and it feels hard and you stay stuck and it feels hard. And like, that's no fun versus, you know what? Okay, but how would it feel to be unstuck? How would it feel if I was past this and like things were flowing my way and it was great and I had people signing up right and left and my coaches were on fire? How would that feel? So just asking yourself, how would it feel if, insert what you want to get past okay um and then the last part that i want to say is tap into a higher power i always say gus i just told you that's my acronym for god universe source again whatever you call them i believe we're all saying the same thing we just all have different words for it so tap in to gus and ask for help and guidance right one of my prayers that i say every day when i'm feeling stuck is like god universe source angels how would you have me do this? Lead me, guide me, show me the way I'm willing to do my part. That's it. It's a simple prayer. Like, God, universe, source, angels, I need you. Show me, lead me, guide me. How would you have me handle this? How would you have me show up today? Who can I help? Who can I serve? I'm willing to do my part. Please guide me. And then be open to the little nudgings that it's like, hmm, maybe I could do it this way. Ooh, maybe I should reach out to them. Oh, I think I forgot to follow up. Or, hmm, maybe I should post a transformation post. You'll get little nudges of like, maybe I should do that. Follow the nudge. Don't overthink it. When you ask for guidance, I expect to be guided, right? When I ask God for help, I expect him to be like, you should do this. And sometimes it's not what I would have thought, but these little thoughts pop in or these little nudges. And I'm like, huh, oh, okay, well, let's just go with it and see where it takes me, okay? And then the one little trick I always have, I have this little post-it on my desk and it says, live as though your prayers have already been answered. So I already live in the moment of 
my success, my success is inevitable. And I'm going to live like every single prayer I've prayed has already been answered. And when you live from that place, it's so much better than being in a place of feeling stuck, stressed. Why isn't this working? This is hard. It's easy for everyone else. It's not for me. No, I'm living as though it's already done. I've told God my vision. I've told God my dreams. I'm willing to show up. I'm willing to do my part by taking action. I'm willing to be consistent. I know that my success is inevitable. So I'm going to live like it's already done. And there's just so much more empower, empowerment that comes when you live from a place like that. Okay. I think I've talked a lot. I have. I'm sorry. I'm going to give you one last story and then we're done. Um, okay. So this picture is from like three years ago. This is my daughter, Charlotte, and she's going down this slide. So what was huge about this time period for her was she was learning how to swim, okay? We were like really deep in the thick of it of like learning how to be a good swimmer. And at the pool, there was this rigorous swim test. I was like, damn, this swim test is hard. Like, I don't even know if I could pass it, but you had to take the swim test in order to go down the big slide at this pool. So that was the goal, be able to go down that big slide. Charlotte wanted to have a pool party for her birthday at the end of summer, and it was going to be private, and they were going to be able to go down the pool, but she could only, or go down the slide, but only if she was able to pass that. So that was the big goal, like, go down the big slide for her party. Like, it was happening. It was done. She wanted it, but she wasn't a strong swimmer. So every freaking day, or it was like Monday through Thursday, for like a month and a half straight, we showed up at the pool for pool for swim lessons. And it was like, oh, my God, it was freaking hot. We had to do it. It was hard. She would do her little, you know, she would try to test for it. And it was like, oh, I don't know if she's going to be able to do this. And, you know, she would, she would try to do the little parts of the test and be like, okay, well, let's try again tomorrow. Bless her heart, her lifeguard, her little teacher was so nice. But every day, Charlotte would kind of be like, okay, how can I pump her up? How can I let her know that like, okay, your birthday's coming up. If you don't pass the test, it's going to be okay. Like, and she was like, I'm so excited, mom. Like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have my party there. and I'm going to go down the big slide. It's going to be amazing. And I'm like, well. She's speaking as if I can get behind that. And, but really in my head, I was like, I don't know. You're showing up every day, but I'm not seeing a lot of progress. But every day she'd be like, it's going to be so fun. And me and my girlfriends, we're going to be down the slide. I'm so excited. I know I can do it. And she showed up every day without complaining and swam her little heart out for a month and a half straight. And this is a picture of her going, passing that freaking swim test and getting to go down the slide for the first time. And I just remember thinking, you know what? I could stand to learn something from her. She had unwavering belief in that it was going to happen. Even when she sucked at swim lessons and I was like, ooh, she had unwavering belief. Like, hell yeah, I'm going to do it. Yes, I'm going to keep showing up. She spoke every day as if it was happening. And she would be like, oh, I'm so excited. My party's going to be so fun. We're going to have this unicorn theme. It's going to be the best. I'm so, so pumped. We're going to, all my friends are going to go down the slide together. Like she believed it unwaveringly she spoke as if it was already happening and then every single day she showed up and took massive action towards being a better swimmer and guess what that's the formula unwavering belief speaking as if yes it's done it's happening her, my success is inevitable and then every day showing up and taking massive action towards that to make it happen doing your part that's how you equal success and I'll tell you here she is this summer in her pool and I'll tell you right now because she didn't give up and because she became a great swimmer, I'll tell you, if she wasn't going to be a good swimmer, it would have been okay. Like, it's all right. You don't have to go down the big pool. You can stay like in the shallow area. You still would have had fun. Like it would have been okay. But because she's such a strong swimmer, I feel comfortable buying a pool and opening up a pool because she didn't give up. And because she kept going, it opened up more opportunity. I'm telling you right now, I never would have even bought her a pool if she wasn't a strong swimmer, but she is, she went for it, she did it. And now look what she gets to enjoy. Not only did she get to have her pool party, but then in the future, she's living her best life in the pool every freaking day because she didn't give up. So that's what I wanna tell you. There's no gain in giving up. So when you're in there and it's hard because this business can be hard and you're like, eh, maybe it's not for me, there's no gain in that fine, go back to your way of life as it was. That's awesome. But you don't even know what magic is ahead for you or what opportunities could be that because you're not going for it, you won't even get to see that opportunity. And the last thing I want to remind you is that believe in your soul that your success is inevitable. Because I know that if you are here listening to this call, it is on purpose, it is for a reason. And I know if you're on this team, your success is inevitable. Okay. Woo! I didn't see any of the comments. 
but what questions do you have for me? <laughs> Let me look. So good. The chat is on fuego. Um, I was trying to keep track because there's a lot of like good, just good comments. Okay. But I, I think you covered all the questions within the presentation. You crushed it. Okay. So if there's any of them, put them in there now. So good, Raquel. Thanks. Y'all know I could get fired up and talk. I talked longer than I wanted to. My apologies, but I just really believe in this so much. And I want it for all of us because I know it's possible. 100%. Good. Any other questions? So good. Okay. Anything that we need to cover before we end? Any announcements? This is the last week for um, Team Cup. We'll also have out next week is the last week of August. So you will see that the Power Hour schedule will change starting on September 1st, but we'll have that schedule done and out to you and change for the pin post by the end of August so that you can roll and plan for your September Power Hour schedule. So it will just and adjust a little bit, but you'll have that information for you. We'll also be talking about um, next week, Jackie and her, and her team cup team will be leaving, leading for power hour. And within the team page, we will also be talking about the next opportunity for the retreat that we talked briefly about last week on the call. So next wave for our February retreat, which happens in 2021, but awesome job. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Happy Sunday. Bye y'all. See y'all on Bye. the social. Bye.